In this lecture, we're going to discover domestication. Uh, and we're going to do that uh, by looking at the balaya foxes uh, that I told you about in the last lecture were experimentally domesticated in Siberia. A brilliant experiment that helps us understand what domestication actually is and also help me uh, and my colleagues test the idea that the unusual abilities that dogs show in using human gestures may be a product of domestication. So for this lecture, uh, chapter four in the genus of dogs is all about this project and about the research uh, on the foxes that I did and also, of course, that Dmitry Balayev, the scientist who actually did the experiment to domesticate the foxes. Uh, and I think it'll be really interesting because it tells you the, the story because uh, Dmitry Balayev was really an amazing um, man. So, and again, communication, because we're still talking about these remarkable communicative, communicative skills. If you haven't had a chance to play the communication games, you can go to dognition.com backslash MOOC and you can play uh, the communication games uh, for free with your dog. Okay, so I told you Dmitry Belayev was an amazing man. I really think he was a hero, literally. He, he fought in World War II, um, and he, in a very difficult time for genetics and biology in Russia post-World War II, uh, in Stalinist Russia, continued to study Darwinian evolution and genetics, even though it was extremely dangerous. His brother was actually a geneticist as well, but was killed uh, because at the time in Russia, uh, geneticists and biologists in general, and sp specifically people who were arguing for Darwinian evolution, were in great danger uh, because this was something that politically uh, was seen as um, uh, not consistent with the dogma of um, the Russian government at the time. So uh, Dmitry Balayev was fascinated by uh, how animals became domesticated. Uh, he thought that he had an idea about what might cause domestication, but of course he believed in evolution and uh, he was ready to use uh, modern genetics or the genetic techniques that he had at the time to study domestication. The challenge was how could he do that uh, and not get persecuted uh, or even killed like his brother? Uh, and in the meantime, in, in figuring out the answer to that, he not only uh, survived and um, uh, you know, had many great students, but he had incredible discoveries about what domestication is and we all benefit. So really, um, uh, people like Ray Coppinger have said that this is probably the most important uh, behavioral genetics work of the previous century, and I agree. I think this, this has had huge impact on my own thinking, as you'll see in the future lectures, as it applies to human evolution. So uh, the fox in the picture is actually one of the products of uh, the experiment, which I'll tell you about next. But that is actually a fox that, if you ask me the species, the species is, it's a red fox. Um, but you can see it's not a very red fox. So something has happened to this fox. Um, and this is one of the Belaya foxes. So having interest in testing the domestication hypothesis and knowing the story of the Belaya foxes, which I'm about to tell you, I traveled uh, to Novozabirsk. It's a city in the middle of Siberia uh, where Belaya moved his family and his research and founded the Institute for Cytology and Genetics, which is part of the academic, uh, the Russian Academy of Sciences. And he conducted 45 years by the time I arrived. But even today, uh, the experiment continues and it's been 55 five years and the experiment was very very simple he had two populations of foxes one population he bred randomly uh, in terms of how they interact with people but the other population the experimental line uh, depicted here they did a very simple test which is at seven months when the when the um, kits the fox kits were seven months old someone as uh, the person in this picture is doing would try to go and approach and touch the fox in the in the foxes that were born in this experimental line and if they had the reaction that you see in the fox in the uh, picture at the bottom uh, then they did not breed that fox but if they had the reaction of the fox in the picture at the top which was they approached they let someone touch them then they would breed that fox with another fox that had that same friendly interested response to people and after 45 years by the time I got there, and now 55 years, they had an incredible uh, population of foxes 
Um, and we learned exactly what it is that causes domestication. So my work that I did there was hosted by Irene Plyas Nina, and then I was helped by Natalie Ignacio, and Natalie's holding the fox, and Irene's standing next to her. Um, and all the work I'm going to describe uh, would not have been possible without their help, but of course I couldn't help but include uh, a picture of these very cute fox kits. Um, that's a, about a three to four month old fox kit uh, that we were working with to see how they use gestures. Um, now, the reason that I went all the way to Siberia to work with Irene Plyas Nina and Ludmila Trutt, who has continued Dmitry Belayev's work after um, he died, was because I told you the challenge of testing the domestication hypothesis was how in the world could we find out if dogs really have unusual communicative abilities if we can't domesticate a species and um, intentionally try to get uh, a population um, to be better at reading gestures. I mean, there's really no way to test the hypothesis, so therefore it's not gonna really be available to scientific study. Uh, and it's not a very good hypothesis then. But the beauty of the foxes is that we knew, as I've described to you, exactly how the foxes that Balayev bred, uh, how they came to be and the selection pressure that resulted in some major changes to the foxes. So let me tell you about the changes that resulted from simply selecting foxes to be friendly uh, interested in people and not aggressive. And I think the, the main thing uh, that is surprising is that even though they only selected on behavior, they ended up having changes in morphology where the foxes that were in the experimental line that were bred to be friendly and interested in people, they had a much higher level or frequency of floppy ears of star mutation, that's the white spot that you often see on domesticated animals. They had a higher prevalence of curly tails. Uh, they had piebald coats, like the fox that I showed you that was white, where they're different colored coats, just like you see on lots of domesticated animals. They also showed a feminized cranium, uh, where basically the shape of the skull actually became uh, more uh, feminized or all males had more feminized cranium in particular and they had skeletal gracilization so basically the bones of their um, limbs became longer and thinner and these are again things that have been observed in lots of other domesticated species that were not experimentally domesticated.